In this video, we're going to look at using inequalities to represent the minimum and maximum possible values of a measurement. We've got four questions here, and we're going to write an inequality for each. In question A, it says a piece of wood is 12 metres long, correct to the nearest metre. We're asked to write an inequality to show the minimum and maximum length the wood could be. The minimum length is often known as the lower bound. The maximum length is often known as the upper bound. All we do here is take the metre and split it into two. So whenever we're given now a unit, we half that. To find the lower bound or the minimum value, I take the half of a metre and subtract it from my 12. To find the maximum length or the upper bound, I take that half metre and add it to the 12. So what we'll have then, we know that we've got 0 0.5 metres to go either way. So for my lower bound, I'll take that off to give me 11.5. And then for my upper bound, I will add it to get 12.5. So this is the minimum value, lower bound, and then the maximum value, which is the upper bound. All we need to do now is write an inequality to represent now the values that the length of wood can take. I'm going to say that that is going to be L. You can write length or just L. I'm going to say that that is going to be equal to or greater than 11.5 metres, yet in turn strictly less than 12.5 metres. So I've included the units here and I've written an inequality to represent the values that the length of wood can take. With our upper bound, we have now this strict inequality such that we can't include the 12.5. We can include the lower bound, but we don't include the upper bound. So all we do is take half a unit smaller and then larger than the rounded measurement and simply put this in an inequality. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. The height of a plant is 240 centimetres, correct to two significant figures. We're asked to write an inequality to show the minimum and maximum possible height of the plant. So this is given to two significant figures. So if we look at 240, the second significant figure is the 4, and this is 10s. So what it's saying is this is given to the nearest 10. So nearest 10. So what we need to do is split this, and splitting that is going to give me 5. So what I'll do is take my 240, and this is going to be centimetres. To find the lower bound, I take this off. So that's going to give me now 235 centimetres. And to find the upper bound or maximum value, I'll add it on, which is 245 centimetres. So all I need to do is write an inequality again. So we'll say that the height, which is h, is going to be equal to or greater than 2, 3, 5 cm, yet in turn strictly less than 245 cm. So the height of that plant can be anywhere between those two given values and we can represent it with this inequality. So nice and logical, nice and straightforward. If you've already done work with upper and lower bounds, this should be fairly, um, fairly straightforward. Okay. Uh, question C. We've got the number 3.78 has been truncated to two decimal places. Essentially, that means cut off or rounded to uh, two decimal places. We're asked to write an inequality to show the upper and lower bound of the number. So this now, and we'll write it here, 3.78. So this has been rounded to the second decimal place or two decimal places. So that is now to the nearest 0 0.01. So what we need to do now is half this particular quantity. If we half that, that is going to give us 0 0.005. This is 1 one hundredth. So all we're doing is halving that. So we need to take this off the 3.78 to find the lower bound. So let's write this in 3.78. So this is going to be 3 point and then we're going to have now 775 and then we need to add it on now to get the upper bound which is going to be 
eight five. So all I've done um, is just added and subtracted it. Added it to get the upper, subtracted it to get the lower bound. Again, if you're unsure, you can do it on a calculator. Of course, if it's if you're allowed to use a calculator. So all we've taken now is the the, the accuracy that we're given. We've halved that and then looked at the possible limits of that. So we can say now that the number, and I'll just call it n, is going to be equal to or greater than 3.775, yet in turn strictly less than 3.785. So it could be anywhere in that given interval. Okay, let's uh, do the last one. Let's go ahead and look at that one. Peter has a hand span of 16.4 centimetres correct to the nearest tenth. We're asked to represent the range of values his hand span can take using an inequality. So what we've got here is 16.4 to the nearest tenth. So all this is saying is to the nearest 0 .0, 0 0.1. So again, what we need to do is split this and that is going to give us now 0. Point and instead of 1, we're going to have 0 0.05. So quite similar to the last one. When we looked at the last one, what we had here was 0 0.01. Splitting that now gave us 0 0.005. So we're splitting this now, and that's going to give us 0 0.05. So all I'm going to do then is for 16.4, we need to subtract that. So that's going to be 16.35. And then we're going to have 16.45. So we can say now that um, his hand span or the length or whatever you want to write. And I'm just going to write it as hand span. Why not? Hand span. So usually we would just use a letter. I'm just looking at different ways this can be done. So his hand span could now be equal to or greater than 16.35 cm yet in turn strictly less than 16.45 cm and that is an inequality to represent the range of a set of values that his hand span can take so it can be anywhere in that um, that particular uh, interval right there so there we go when you do this topic you might um, hear this being called limits of accuracy or upper and lower bounds or intervals it all comes back to the same thing we simply take the value and what it's been rounded to whatever it's been rounded to we take half of that subtract it for the lower bound or the minimum value add it for the upper bound or the maximum value and simply write it in in as an inequality or using inequality notation for the lower bound we can include the value for the upper bound we can't so we have now the uh, inclusive inequality and the strict inequality you might 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 be asked to represent this on a number line um, and what you could do if you really wanted with this inequality let's put here um, what we would have is 16 uh, so 16.4 you might have this uh, and what I'll do is just do this, uh, 16.35 and 16.45, uh, and let's just write this in, and we can say, now, hand span, hand span uh, uh, in cm, and what we would do with uh, the, the number line, let's go ahead and just put this on, let's put one of those just there, and then we could put another one on, let's put one the same size, uh, less likely to do this, but if you wanted to represent it on a number line, we could go ahead and do this. So what I'll have is uh, this will go between them like that. And then we would need to fill this one in right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just color this one in because it's inclusive of that quantity. So if you were asked to represent this on a number line using an inequality, that is how you would do it. Close dot because we can include it, open dot because we can't, and it would look something like so.